up to date on all the specific names of the currents and which ones are which. But right. but yeah, there are there are certainly um, dominating currents at certain times throughout the year that are going to dictate um, where things flow. Um, I'm also yeah. astonished as someone who's only visited the islands a couple of times and uh, how tiny they are and how vast this ocean is. It makes you appreciate those early indigenous people that were able to navigate across these vast oh, stretches of ocean yeah. simply using uh, dead reckoning in the stars yeah. and paddling small canoes. It's extraordinary. Right. Uh, much less the later explorers who came in sail sailing ships. Yeah. Really, really impressive feat of engineering. Of, of navigation to find these little tiny specks of land right. in this vast water desert. Yeah, it, it absolutely is amazing. I don't, you know, I'm someone, I'm not anywhere near in tune with, with nature in that regard. And it's amazing to see, like you're saying, the indigenous people, to, you know, they learned, that's the way they learned, and that's all they knew, and it, it's what works. And um, they still do it to this day. There's still a couple of cruises a year that will go out and navigate just by the stars alone. Um, and yeah, it's, it's absolutely amazing that they, they set out on those adventures and they, you know, they find these regions and new areas, but let alone even doing it, if you knew something that was there to go look for, right? Yeah. <laughs> just going out looking for something, like, you know, it's just, it's amazing, yeah. Well, I, I know that Hawaii Damn. is in the, you know, in the middle of the big, in the big currents, you have, you know, right below us, you have essentially the northern equatorial current moving from the Americas over to, you know, to Asia, Australia. And then you have the Kuroshio that comes up above, and then the Californian current brings it back below. So it's kind of in the middle of a big circulating current, you know, that's kind of in the middle of the Pacific there. So the current would carry you from essentially the, the uh, western coast of South America uh, west out towards Hawaii. That uh, current you're talking about, Dan? Yeah, if you're south. You know, you have to go sort of south. And, uh, Correct. You know, and Gotta then, catch it. Just yeah. right. And that's why a lot of sailing ships went down, you know, so those are the... Those are the major currents. I don't know that there's, you know, big currents that run through Hawaiian islands, you know, other than like the Molokai is kind of yeah. has high currents running through those. <coughs> yeah, the Gulf Stream is so strong in yeah. some places it's difficult to, to move against unless you, uh, you know, have a motorized vessel. But the, uh, and I know I've read that the reason those, some of those species are on the Galapagos Islands is that there were probably uh, turtles, for example, some of those tortoises, how did they wind up on the Galapagos? Because of that current, Dan, that you just described, they probably got, uh, you know, there, uh, a big flood occurred, some of them were t uh, got on a log and were carried by chance out to the Galapagos Islands. But uh, for some of these n indigenous peoples to have traveled these distances is absolutely extraordinary. So we have a viewer asking, how land will build up, how, how will this land build up to be above the surface? So we are currently at the Kamea Kanaloa hotspot, or seamount, sorry, not hotspot, but this seamount is being formed over the Hawaiian hotspot. So as the Pacific tectonic plate moves over this hot spot, you get eruptions and lava that's released and builds up and over, it's going to be a long time, like a million years or so, and eventually it will build up enough that this volcano will erupt into being on the surface, and that hot spot will be completely moved off of the big island as this plate continues to move, and then the big island will stop growing, and it'll actually start to shrink due to weathering, um, and so we will then have a new Hawaiian island. So if you cryogenically freeze yourself, um, make an investment ahead of time, maybe you can set yourself up pretty because Hawaii real estate is very expensive nowadays. So what, what we're seeing is a future part of the state of Hawaii. Yep, future part of Hawaii. As the plate moves from east to west over the, over the hot spot and it finds a fissure or a crack in the crust and, and uh, moves up towards the surface, as you say, creating this new land. It's a slow process. And it looks like there, I was asking this question earlier, that, that it, there's about a two million year difference between each of the islands. So as you go west from island to island, you can add about two million years. Uh, looking at each island, that's how, how quickly the plate is moving over the hot spot. And that then you'll, is correct. And yeah, you'll the, the more west you go, the older the, the island. older they get. And then you'll notice when you get out west to Midway Island, 
that the island chain takes a, it, it, it goes to the uh, north uh, west and so the, the uh, plate has changed its motion some hundreds of millions of years ago instead of moving east to west it started moving from it was moving from south east to northwest you can actually see it if you look at google maps for example look at the seamounts so the um estimated growth rate for kamea kanaloa is 0 0.1 foot per year so you can see at that rate it's a pretty slow time to grow seeing as we are now at 1115 meters deep so it has a long way to grow to break the surface yeah. and earlier while uh, larry was here and larry's trained as a geologist he uh, asked him what's i asked him what was the difference the stuff that dan and i've been uh, talking about is uh, these uh, volcanic eruptions that occur in indonesia where you have just tremendous explosive eruptions that occur very rapidly from the buildup of steam, uh, water pressure. Uh, and for example, Tonga, which, which erupted so violently a, a little over a year ago, was visible by NASA satellites. I think everybody saw that one, uh, versus Hawaii. Larry says very little chance of an explosive eruption like that because of the slow moving lava. It's a different type of lava, different type of rock, different type of island. Uh, but that uh, those violent eruptions that occur periodically, particularly down in Indonesia, have had a profound impact on the earth as a whole. It was a, 1816 was known as a year without a winter, uh, without a summer, excuse me, because it was winter all year long because of a volcanic eruption in 1815 in Indonesia. Uh, but Hawaii, wow. these, these are very different, very slow growing, as you say. So it's going to take some time for this yeah. to reach the surface. Uh, we have a viewer that is going back to the chat or the question that a different viewer asked about saying they wanted to study oceanography but felt they're too old. And they were talking that they would like to study oceanography as well and was wondering if anyone knows of any good free or inexpensive classes on oceanography and or marine science available remotely. So does anyone know of any? I'd say the school of YouTube uh, from reputable sources would be <laughs> pretty good. I'm not, and I'm not sure if Khan Academy or other such uh, yeah. uh, programs have specifics on oceanography or just general science, but that's worth looking into as well. There's some free um, courses by, from uh, university level uh, uh, professors that are available out there. I know that MIT offers some free online classes that are that are uh, essentially some of the same classes they offer to MIT students and if you log on to the MIT website I'm sure they'll direct you right to it yeah it'd be worth looking up some of the top oceanography schools um, and then taking a look at what their online content um, and what they recommend I'd say And there are quite a few uh, online schools too that you can kind of look into. Like I know um, University of Phoenix is one of your big online schools, but I'm not familiar if they have a specific oceanography program, but you can look into it. And a lot of other universities are kind of moving towards that general direction. So also I think just kind of reach out to your community college around you. You might be surprised at what classes your local community college could offer as well. I just checked my email and I, it is uh, MIT, it's called MIT Open Learning and there's a uh, MIT, it's called MIT X and there are free MIT online courses uh, available to anybody to sign up. So if you simply go to MIT X uh, and look at their website, these are free online MIT courses or reading from the website. Anyone can learn from free from uh, from MIT available. They've already reached millions of people and uh, at uh, undoubtedly it's got some oceaneering classes in there but it's an extraordinary array, array of uh, MIT classes available there for free. So I have a viewer asking if this is the Loihi Volc 
a volcano. So Catalanta heading it north is, now. but there is a name change. So it was named Loihi in 1955, which means long in Hawaiian, but it doesn't really, the name Loihi doesn't really give, um, use the Hawaiian's rich cultural history of uh, names. And so it's not very descriptive. So Kamea Kanaloa, according to U.S. Geographical Survey, has been described as several meles or chants, which have orally been passed down and documented in writing decades before 1954 uh, expedition. So there's been records of Hawaiians talking about this land and this volcanic activity that we have here prior to naming it Loihi, and they would use the name Kamea Kanaloa. So they've changed the name to reflect that Hawaiian culture and history. So it is no longer called Loihi, it is now called Kamea Kanaloa. Roger that, yeah. So we are backing down to the west. So you'll see, if you're facing north, you're gonna see slope up here, here to the east. Um, we're backing down until we get down to 1165 or 1160, somewhere around there. Um, we still have the ship moving east. Uh, that last move will settle out on another five meters or so. Um, we're getting there though, pretty close. We there's that there's that back, same yep. uh, one we saw earlier that same fish yeah i'm glad it's there it marked our uh essentially mark where now we're back So I'll hold the ship up there. We're now complete that move. I'll wait till Atalanta swings. We'll see if we can acquire that 1160 and then we'll start moving south along the contour um, yeah, around the rim of the crater. Or sorry, around an ISO band of the crater, not quite at the rim, a little bit further in. So we have a viewer who is saying, um, asking, is saying that it is said Mauna Kea has seen some pretty large explosive eruptions in the past, so it's not beyond possibility it could again. So just to kind of clarify and give a little feedback on the volcanoes on the Big Island. So there are a total of six volcanoes um, that make up the Big Island. We have Mahu Kona, and um, Zach, correct me on my pronunciation. Yeah, um, Mahu Kona. Mahu Kona. I've never heard that referred to yeah. as a... Uh, yeah, we have Mauna Kea, Mauna Loa. Um, Hualalai is the one you can see easily from uh, the Kona side. Then you have Kohala, which is... I don't know if they're referring to Mahu Kona as... It, says it's, it says it's the oldest of it. Okay, yeah. So, so from Mahukona. oldest to youngest is Mahukona, Koalaha, Mauna Kea, yeah. Hualalea. Yeah, Hualalai. Hualalai. Um, Kilauea. Kilauea and then, yeah. So Kilauea is currently the one that is most active. Yeah. So Mauna Kea, that's the one that we have all the observatories on top. Yeah. And it hasn't erupted in recent time. Um, right. But it's, so the last eruption on Mauna Kea was about 4,500 years ago, according to US, um, G USGS. And, but it, they do say it is likely to erupt again. Yeah. So, um, and it says 
it, it has really quiet periods between eruption compared to those Roger that, of are you at the correct uh, depth Hualalai. there? Hualalai. Hualalai. Okay, we'll Hualalai. 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 Mauna Loa and uh, It's going to be 160, 165. 165. Bridge, nav. Uh, step 30 meters, 165. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. So Kilauea is the one that erupts most, but last um, December Mauna Loa did erupt as well. So that was kind of cool to see the two um, volcanoes erupting at the same time, and that hasn't happened in a long time. But yeah. Zach, you want to talk about living on the Big Island and how it is to live on an active volcano? I mean, yeah, seven, most, seven active volcanoes. Yeah, most of the time it's it's pretty good. When the volcano starts erupting, obviously, you know, you get prepared for anything. Um, yeah, I was out here back in like 2016 when when we had the big one where Kilauea was erupting down to the ocean. Um, that was a pretty pretty hard time for a lot of people, um, and also one of just kind of uh, a lot of observation. It it took out quite a few homes during that one. Um, that area still is, um, you know, people aren't doing much down there still just because the risk is still there. Um, so, yeah, we've had that. The Mauna Loa one was, uh, I think, came as a surprise to a lot of people. I could be wrong. Um, but it's one of those they talked about for, you know, they've been talking about how overdue they are, and then it did actually erupt. So, that was one of those where, yeah, you got to be ready. And that one had the potential to flow any direction. So, that really put the whole island on alert, I think. Um, unless you're kind of up the Hamakua coast side, then. You're, you're fairly safe up there. Uh, I wouldn't ever say you're completely safe from anything. Um, but but yeah, the the hardest part when the volcano is erupting is the fog that it brings, um, which is basically like volcanic fog. So yeah, that all kind of blows over and settles on the Kona side. So ironically, the volcano's on the east side, but it, that fog will settle on the west side. So um, it's a little rough living over there when the volcano's erupting. I know a lot of people end up actually leaving because of like their asthma and things. It's, it's tough to breathe, but yeah, so um, we don't yeah. have to deal with smog in Hawaii, but we yeah. do have to deal with fog. Yep. But, yeah, overall, it, I mean, it, it brings a very unique perspective, and it's also, you know, can be very humbling when you see nature doing its thing around you. And, um, yeah, just something to be respectful of and observe, and, yeah, pretty special. I have to say, I think I prefer living on Oahu where I can just fly over and see the lava yeah. if I want, but I don't have to worry about it yeah. destroying my house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Big Island is definitely different than than um, Oahu for sure. Um, it's, yeah, there's, there's just a lot, yeah. a lot of differences between the two for sure, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see, um, yeah, just over time how things change is, I mean, I was talking hundreds and millions of years down the road, but just how the islands change and yeah. Thank you, Zach. So someone in the chat has put in for, if you're interested in free online courses for college credit, they suggest looking at sites like study.com for to find various universities that offer online, partial online degrees. Um, so yeah, you, if you want to do that, you can check out study.com. So someone asked, what is VOG? Zach, how would you describe what VOG is? Uh, basically, volcanic fog. So yeah. it looks like fog, but it, it burns a lot more to breathe in. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure of all the gases that are in it, but it, yeah, it can be pretty bad, um, especially when the volcano, like when it was really erupting. That was my last for a couple, I think, years before we had can clean Can we stand air by again. for a second here, everybody, uh, with the conversation? Can we just do... On SPL, we have some operational speaks that uh, needs to go through. We'll Sounds stand good. by. There's too many conversations going on. 
Uh, Jonathan, can you go ahead? Yeah, it's a little too much happening right now. <laughs> we just, well, yeah, well, we, yeah, are we going, uh, I just want to hear if you're trying to speak over some operational stuff there. Okay. All right, sure. Okay, well, we need to, yeah, you know, so we'll turn you off for now. Go back to SPL, okay. All right, Dan, do you want to give us a situational update? Dan, do you want to give us a situational update? Sure, so once again, we're continuing down the isobath and just looking for additional hydrothermal vents. Um, a previous dive reported there was one this high up on there, and it was like a pretty hot one, I think around uh, 180, 200 degrees Celsius. So hopefully that'll be, we'll be able to see that. So we're looking for shimmering water coming out. And at that point, we're stop and investigate it. So Jonathan, the viewers are asking if it'd be possible to get a good view or zoom on some of these fish like eels and wondering if, cause they could maybe be specifically vent associated. So would that mess up with our, your modeling that you're trying to do or is that a possibility? Um, I don't think it would right now. We are though, we're trying to actually get to a site of the actual vents. So it would be fantastic uh, if we can arrive at one of those sites and then um, we can do we can do other science objectives like that. So right now we're just attempting to trans uh, transit at the same uh, depth that was reported for a pretty major vent that was discovered back in the late 90s, I believe. Um, yeah, I'm looking for the report now. Um,
Oh, you can put it back up. It's still strobing just a little bit, which is annoying, but I have to download the uh, footage as we speak, so. Uh, but it's it's up and it's clean. The image is clean. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Oh, huh, yeah. Oh, the Is that some sort of line down the slope? I was just going to say, there's like a straight line down that slope. Huh. I got something billowing there, shimmer? too. Right there? To the uh, left there, Dan? Dan, did you see that? Go back to the left. Oh. Hey, Dan, there was uh, some shimmer out there to the left. I don't think he, ha he can hear us. Hey, Johan. Yeah, go ahead. Hey Dan, did you uh, can you go back towards the left? We thought we saw some shimmer. Ed. Hey Dan, can you go back to the left? We thought we saw some shimmer. And there was like a line running vertically or down the cliff to give you a sort of a point of it. Yeah, we all definitely saw it. Yeah, there was definitely a smoke coming out. That line, too, was strange down that flow. Yeah. It looked like it's just a piece of string. Yeah, viewers suggesting fishing line, question mark. Okay. There it is. They, they sort of saw it right about here, so you can kind yeah, of Yeah, there was down. the line, and then it was to the right of the line. Maybe go yeah. up a little bit. Just a little bit. And to the right. To the right now? Yeah, to the right, just a little bit. Did you see it right there, Jonathan? Is that yeah, what I think so. I think it's a little bit more right. 
We weren't this close before. There's definitely that line, though. There's two pieces of it. Jonathan, do you think do you think it's to the right? Yeah, it's to the right. Okay. Yeah, there's definitely like a string there, it looks like. I'm not seeing it now, do you? Uh, I think it's it's still it's still over to the uh, starboard. Yeah, just uh Dan's waiting for Can you come to the right just a little bit more? A little more. A little more. <laughs> is that, is it, is it up towards there, Jonathan? Yeah. Maybe stand off uh, by about a meter. Maybe stand off by about a meter uh, away from the wall. Oh, now I'm not sure what's what. Oh, the, the blackish to the yeah. upper right-hand side. I saw it, didn't you? Oh, maybe not. Raj. I'm not seeing it. Do you want to keep investigating? Oh, yeah, no, I think it's gone. Okay. Um, front row, uh, we don't think we see it anymore, so you can continue along the isopath. Thank you. Yeah, copy that. Um, so, Simon, our, what we're doing right now is we're just going to track a line this uh, 1160 Bathy line, kind of. So, we just moved a little north to check this out again, but our bearing will be uh, 165. I'm going to start time lapse again. Roger. Thank you.
And this could be nice for the immersive filming. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh, Simon, are you on SPL? Hmm. Hey, uh, front row. Um, I think this is a, looks like a great spot. I can see some other ridge lines kind of ahead of this one. I'm wondering if we can set up for a little bit of the immersive filming, which would mean triclop. I'll wait. Okay, Jonathan, you should be good to continue. Okay, so um, I'd like to set this up for the Atalanta lit kind of immersive filming. Um, this seems like a good spot. There's a couple of extra ridges here. Um, so the request from the ship move and Atalanta angle would be to use Atalanta as the lighting platform. So getting it um, perhaps uh, overhead of the ridge itself or however you would choose to orient it. The goal will be to film this ridge line and the subsequent ridges behind it that I can just barely see in that Atalanta view um, as we kind of soar over the edges of this uh, uh, volcanic uh, slope. Um, so I'm just putting that out there for, for any feedback from the front row if this is a good time um, to do that, especially in, in concerns with the winch, etc. That's, cor that's correct, but the trick is that we um, ideally would not use any lights or if any light, just the starboard light that's currently on the uh, Predator Manip um, and instead rely on the Atalanta lights as the lighting platform. So that would require Atalanta to essentially be over the ridge line and pointing its lights down or uh, towards, towards, the, uh, towards where the Hercules currently is. Correct. Light on the arm on, all of the other lights off, um, and Ad Atalanta basically being close enough to operate as our lighting platform to kind of fly right under and then over to reveal the uh, rest of the uh, seamount there. Uh, that's correct, yeah. So you would arm out and probably get as light that as far as is safe. I kind of like that the... Uh, slope on the uh, port side there is is uh, closest to the vehicle so I'm uh, ready for for the winch on this side so, so Jonathan just to confirm is this uh, a good place for where you want Hercules to do the flyover so we'll position at a kind of based on this spot that is correct yeah right. let's let's just set this up right here we'll take what we can get and uh, Oh, this will look very cool. Okay. So Ad is still on its move from our previous, uh, the line we were attacking with the ship. Um, but to get it in position, I think I'll do a, just like a 15 meter at a bearing of one zero. That's okay with you, Simon. should put it just on or just behind Hercules' current position. Bridge, bridge, nav, one five at zero one zero, please. Thank you. 
That looks amazing. It does look amazing. Um, uh, and just for, uh, I don't require the lights be off uh, now, Simon. If you're, I'm happy with that lighting setup just like that is. But if you need more uh, lighting for now, that's fine. Okay. We have some excited viewers really liking the lighting. Why isn't, uh, actually, sir, can I get the uh, forwards on right now? I just want to check my focus before we go full up here. Simon, would you like me to turn those on for you? Uh, Fords, he's he's requesting. Come on. There we go. Okay. Thank you. I'm good. Roger. So what? I'm zoomed in. Yeah. So I can zoom back out for you real quick. That is my current. Yeah, that's my current location. Yeah, that's incredible. Should make sure you lock some highlights of this stuff too. I love this shadow of Herc with its arm out. That's, that rock. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty beautiful. Do we have the ability to highlight yeah, your cameras well. or no? Sorry? Do we have the ability to highlight from your cameras yet or no? Uh, no, we're gonna no. have to manually highlight okay. those, yeah. Cause that looks awesome. Yeah, it's incredible. Is there something in particular you want me to call it? I don't know. Setting up for immersive. So, um, is it possible to have Atalanta be um, just a little bit forward or two of uh, Hercules for this. Yeah, and then maybe uh, Simon, if, if possible, to all stop on Hercules and kind of wait for it to overfly. Yeah, I like that. I just want more light from Atalanta to kind of hit that first ridge that you hit. I like it. Okay. Winch, winch, control, please come up three meters. Yeah, so Mike, I'll bring us about right over this ridge, just yep. so you know. Yep. And then um, once you're settled, I'll need the uh, tool tray rolled out but you do have to be careful not to roll it out like all the way. Uh, just a couple of bumps, otherwise it'll fall off the... Bridge, yeah, it's not bridge, that bad. Uh, <laughs> two five at zero seven five, please. Thank you.
So Simon, then I'll bring Ada about here. It's gonna be coming across you in a second as well. Just yeah. So for any oops, I'll stop force talk in the front for you guys. So for any viewers, um, we're just uh, moving Atalanta over the ridge line here. Um, as one mentioned, one of the goals of this uh, dive is to help record um, this incredible location um, for new media like um, immersive uh, full projection rooms or large scale domes that you might be able to that you might be able to see um, at a science center um, as well as uh, VRXR. Um, so our camera system is currently on the front of ROV Hercules. Um, it's 280 degree stereo uh, cameras that we'll be recording together. And we're very excited to see this, see the results of this filming right here. But as always with anything in the deep sea, especially in dark and, and uh, situations like this, a great deal of care and caution and patience goes into maneuvering the ROVs so that when we do a maneuver like this, it's, uh, it's a success. There's a viewer that wants to thank Dr. Ballard for making this possible because uh, they've been wanting to see this seam out for 30 plus years. That's awesome. Well, it's very cool. Mm -hmm. We have a viewer asking if the film can be used in a planetarium. Absolutely, yeah. The only problem or uh, a challenge with a planetarium is that um, they're meant to look up, and uh, as you can see for the deep sea, you're often looking down. So it's a little bit of a challenge to make it a comfortable viewing experience. I don't know, they usually have like those recliner seats, don't they? Yeah. So I think it would be okay. Yeah, I'd like that. So in sat feed two, you can see the view of Atalanta as it just very slowly moves over to orient itself on top of ROV Hercules. Um, and as it moves, you can see the light filling in on this one ridge line. The ship move is complete, um, but Ada is still taking her time. So on channel three now, um, I've put the 180 degree fisheye view of the port camera. Um, that's the viewpoint that you're going to get. You see just a little bit of the arm in, in the frame, which is totally fine, offering us a little bit of extra side lighting for this. Yeah, Rod, yeah thank you.
Okay. Are you happy with the uh, lighting and everything? I am, yeah. Um. Anna is still on the move, so it might Roger. get a little more centered on that ridge in a second. But. So, um, once Atalanta is centered up and you're happy with it, um, oh, yeah. it's just incredible. Look at that. That's beautiful. Just beautiful, yep. Yeah. Um, so, so once once we're uh, happy with that, I'm actually just going to start recording now because I can. Um, what I prefer is that we uh, back up, just like straight backwards on the ROV as uh, long as you are comfortable. And then we're essentially just going to fly right under Atalanta as it's li lighting this ridge and uh, see what see what the shot looks like. All right. Sounds good. You going for your cinema shot right now, John? Yeah, cup it up. And uh, as far as Zeus, you can orient that camera to however you would like to uh, help the shot as well, or, or your own situational awareness. Copy that. That should be a, that should be a fairly good angle, I think. Can you try shutting off that sidearm light? Oh, man. And can you just try the forwards only right now, just to so we know what our options are? Yeah. Ah, no, down, down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, no, that's not going to work. Um, well, I'd say that we, uh, I like this. Let's, um, let's lock in the shot. Uh, is Atalanta ready? And are you happy, um, Hercules? Yep. Yeah. Okay, um, I would like to do the same thing we did last time, where we turn off Atalanta's lights, we start the forward move, and after five seconds, turn on Atalanta's lights one by one. Okay, Herc is ready. Okay, so the sequence of events here is going to be an all light off on Atalanta, followed by the start of uh, the Hercules move, and then after five or ten seconds after Hercules starts to get going, maybe Simon, you say Mark, uh, you, you can go ahead and control the lights coming on to Atalanta, and then we are just gonna maintain a slow, steady, and safe cruise right under Atalanta and over the ridge and into the darkness beyond. Roger. All right, so I am uh, starting with the record and lights off and uh, action at your discretion, um, ROV team. Copy that. Lights coming off on Herc. On Atlanta. Okay. I'm going to start moving, so on my mark in five. Four. Three. Two. One. Okay, start bringing up the lights. Roger. And once Atalanta goes, uh, or once Hercules goes under uh, your discretion on moving Atalanta to orient where Hercules is going. And you can also raise up Atalanta as much as you want. Yeah, you're going to need to come up.
We can start that again if you'd like. Yeah, I think um, we'll start coming up as uh, as we come across. We're Roger. That's a little close. Yep. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, not a problem. You can do that. So what we're doing right now is just resetting. We'll have another run at that. One of the elements of this uh, style of filming is that it's very rarely if ever done. So um, well, everything that you're seeing here is um, based off of kind of immediate feedback with the rest of the team, okay. the conditions that are in front of us to help record what this uh, spot is. Okay. Okay, lights going off on at Atalanta. All right. Okay. Lights off on All Herc. All lights off on Herc. All right. All right, Roger. Moving forward in three, two, one. Moving ahead. There you go. You can back off the speed just a little. Roger. Think slow thoughts. Incredible view in and uh, if we can we could just uh, let ROV Hercules go into the darkness your discretion to turn on ROV Hercules uh, side light too if you need that for situational at any time you want yeah that looks cool absolutely fantastic Can you kind of explain a little bit more about the lighting and what you're sitting up, uh, lighting situation here and what you're kind of capturing and whatnot? So a challenge is that um, when you turn on all the lights on a vehicle like this underwater, you get what's called backscatter. All the little particulates in the water um, uh, shine that light right back at you. Um, so having the lights as far away from the cameras as possible increases the clarity of the image. It's kind of like why you have fog lights. Sometimes more light is not better. If you turn on your high beams in the fog, it blasts you out. Um, uh, the low beams are kind of further away from your eyes, so they help clarity and through it. That's a fantastic run, guys. Um, I'm done here. Uh, we can't do that better. Um, so I'd look for the next site after you guys get um, situational and we can, we can keep moving. All right, copy that. Copy that. Thanks, Jonathan. Thank you. Exceptionally beautiful. Uh. Uh, in fact, you can see exactly what I mean right there. We turned on the lights and... Um, suddenly kind of the picture becomes a little bit more milky and that's that is the backscatter that we're talking about so by having Atalanta just offer that view as its lighting sled um, like as a off off camera lighting sled it it really does uh, offer a significant interesting viewpoint that really works for that dramatic kind of reveal of a landscape Uh, so nav team, are we are we moving Atalanta now towards Hercules, or? Um, I think we were going to move. Uh, if you are done with your shot, uh, then what we were doing before was tracking just this uh, isobathy line 
uh, this contour of 1160 meters depth. Okay. Uh, looking for a described venting that we have in a log. Just uh, if if we could, can we turn around Hercules to look back towards uh, Atalanta and see if there's a shot there? Sure. Opportunistic shot without moving Herc other than the turn. Yeah, Jonathan, and if there's other shots you want us to take, this is a good time. Okay. Yeah, let's let's do that. Let's turn around and look at what Atalanta's doing. Okay, coming around now. Fantastic view. If anyone's watching on satellite feed two of Hercules turning around towards Atalanta, not something you typically see. And that's Atalanta now. Um, so my, can we get the lights off on Hercules and see what she's lighting up? And um, Mike, is there any viewpoint that you can see shifting Atalanta to the left and right? Not sure if there's anything that we can actually see here. I uh, I can't shift left and right. I can uh, twist. Oh, twist. Yeah. Do do the do the Harlem shake, please. Watch for that. Wait, no, not the Harlem shake. I put some lights on in my counter. Um, Atalanta's lights. Just. Uh, yeah. Correct. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, let's try the uppers. Yeah. There we go. I'll just come up a little more, just do that. Okay. Go in the opposite direction. There is Atlanta. Um, well, I don't think that this is... Uh, I think uh, as as... If you can get up a little closer to Atalanta and maybe see if there's a shot of uh, just that vehicle while maintaining safe tether, etc. Sure. Yep. Winch, winch control, standby for quick move. The chat is saying you should do photogrammetry of Atalanta. <laughs> and that they wish you were on for all the expeditions. I wish I was on too. Uh, no, uh, photogrammetry for Atalanta, um, we'll go ahead and just uh, publish a 3D model of that. Again, this is just such an incredibly rare opportunity, though, to see Atlanta in the way that we are right now. Um, I mean, both on Sat Feed 1 is a fantastic highlight, actually. Coming around 180 degrees. Just how beautiful that is. Um, and then thank you for that beautiful spin. <laughs> you can also demonstrate there's been a couple of times in the chat people are um, mentioning how Atalanta is attached directly to the vessel, uh, Hercules is maintaining its depth, and you can see the up and down movement of, uh, of Atalanta. That's all caused from the, the surface movement of the, the waves on the vessel, and then the effect of the cable yeah. straight down connection to, without any damping straight down to Atlanta. So. Mike, can you talk about um, tether maintenance and how you guys kind of control or make sure you don't get yourself wrapped up in that tether since we have such a good shot and view of the tether right now? Yeah, so uh, both Simon and I work together to maintain and make sure that we don't not only put twists uh, into our Simon, can tether, I get all lights off? Let's um, see what that looks like now that we're close. That you can see the yellow tether, but also the twist into our main Yeah, that's wire. fantastic. So we actually have sensors on both Atalanta and Hercules that uh, keep account of any kind of rotational twist that we may be putting into the tether or the the wire going up to the ship, um, and so it's uh, our job to kind of keep a, a position to make sure that that doesn't happen, um, Mike, can or at least when we do, to go ahead and, and uh, undo them prior to retrieval. And uh, Mike, uh, can you do another 180 the opposite direction while Simon laterals to the uh, starboard side? 180 degree, correct. And yeah. Simon laterals to the starboard of safe, all beans. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So yeah, in the, in we'll the let we're going to uh, undo the undo the move that we've just done, <laughs> so that we uh, <laughs> part of that tether management is we do a move like uh, that. And I'm uh, I'm good with this shot, so we can we can go all lights on, all safe. Thank we'll you. Roger that.
Winch, winch control, please come up three meters. What's our delta, our, our, our uh, height off the ground right now? Uh, currently 27 meters up. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. So now as, as Atlanta comes up, I'm just following around with my camera just to keep an eye on that tether. I've also got a view out of the back of the ROV where I can see what it's doing. And uh, if uh, Atalanta just turns towards me a little, then we can we can double check the the ROV yep. tether position as well. Make sure we're all safe in that direction and not coming over the top of it. Uh, yeah, it all looks good, and I can see from there it's off on my starboard side. So I'm going to move away to the, my port and rotate around that way. So winch winch control, please come up another three meters. And then as you can see there. In uh, Atalanta's view, if you still have it, the tether coming nicely out the back of the vehicle. Everything looks nice and straight again. So, all looks good. Yep. All wraps are out, and we just have our half wrap for the tether. Yeah, roger that. Huh. Oh, beauty of that as well. And from our perspective, in a second, whether Rachel that was a safe down. move, we've, we've very little current down here within the crater, so we're kind of... Uh, Assess that as well for those kinds of shots. If there's a high current situation, then we wouldn't we have a little more danger doing things in the dark. And, but the water's pretty still down here, so. That's your, uh, your butt light is off still. I don't know if you butt want that off. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So Simon, um, the chat is saying, um, isn't a negative delta usually against all the usual ROV movement rules. Can you please explain what a negative delta is for other viewers and your thoughts on that? So, um, yeah, normally we wouldn't keep a, a negative delta. We're lucky with the Atalanta that she does have um, the capability to rotate and keep an eye on the tether. Um, normally, I uh, assume there's some ROV people in the chat. If we have a tether management system like a top hat or a garage, then typically we wouldn't take the ROV above the uh, above that tether management system um, usually those not in all cases but in most cases that tether management system won't have uh, the ability to rotate around and won't have as as good a cameras to view what we're doing we were extremely careful in assessing uh, all risks in what we've just done um, and again you know we've very benign water conditions down here so yeah we're kind of keeping on that but but definitely unless uh, Something's really gone wrong. We definitely don't like a negative delta. We like to keep everything going down towards the seabed. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah just so everyone's on the same page, it is 6.06, .06, so we have about 54 more minutes on bottom here. Um, Unless there are any other new requests from science, uh, then we'll just kind of go back to what we were doing, which is hunting for that uh, potential venting that we described a long time ago at like the 1160 Bathy line. Um, so to get us back in position, Simon, if you want to take a look over at my screen, if you can. We were kind of tracking along here and looking at this surface along this line. I roger that. Just so uh, I would move uh, Ada probably back about 20 meters, and then you could come back to that position. Or you can, yeah, you can come back and then we'll move Ada okay. kind of out of the way. Yeah, and about another 15 meters descent to make to get to that 1160.
Are you comfortable with me starting out as move backwards? Um, yeah, or just get, the, get a view in from Atlanta. And, um, sure thing. Yeah. Sorry. One second. Come down a little on the, yep. on the winch. Yeah. It's yep. 11.50, so. Control, or winch, winch control, please come down 10 meters. Sorry, I'm trying to finish off some logs. I mean, you have a little bit of a ridge coming up behind you. I'll copy that. I think that's another shrimp there. And in the chat, someone put shimmer with a question mark. We're looking for, when we talk about shimmer, it kind of means, um, it kind of represents where a hydrothermal vent is because you have this hot water, it changes the density. So it kind of like think of when you're in the desert and you see mirages or that high, that hot air temperature crane Winch. creates this shimmer to it. So if we see this kind of shimmer in the water, it indicates a different density, different temperatures and possible hydrothermal vent for us. And then Simon, Mike, their uh, chat is asking if the winch is um, acting up again. Yeah, so we've got to uh, having to use the uh, the controls out on the deck to in order to come up and down on our winch. So we've got a radio controlled winch right now. So Simon, can you hold stuff on? on the floor? Do you see what? Can Straight we ahead. zoom in on what's what's there? Is it debris? I don't, I'm not sure. It looks like there's like a shell at the bottom and then yeah, it's debris. It's on top of a uh, container like of some kind. Yeah. All right, let's man made. It's home for something in there. Oh, somebody hanging out inside of it. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, oh. we can move on. Thank you. Roger. Dan, what do you think that was? It kind of looked almost like um, a piece of fabric to me and ropes and stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure, but you see there's another rope thing here as well. Yeah. So just wanted to check to see, you know. And it had a little eel living under it. Well, they take advantage of every habitat they can, can. man-made or natural. Okay. I feel like the number of eels we've been seeing have increased. Is that a, is that a gulper? Oh, there's another eel, is it? Another eel. Winch, winch control, please come up three meters. Simon, just let me know when you're ready for that westward ship move. Okay, I'm down at, pretty much down at the 11, 60 meter uh, line. Oh, nice. Okay, I think we're gonna come back and that might bring you over that ridge that we initially passed in that, that schematic view. Uh, and then I think that might be the ridge that we are yeah, looking to follow. 
this landscape definitely looks to me of how I'd imagine a ocean on Mars would look. I agree. Because, you know, it's got, got the red planet, yeah. uh, volcanic activity, you know, back when there was still water. <laughs> okay, going to move two zero at 245. 20 at 245, by the way. Bridge, bridge nav, 20 at 245. Renny, did you think that the chat is asking if that black one was a gulper? What, was it a gulper? Was it like a shadow on the rock? I was, it kind of had that shape it's of a gulper, but I couldn't quite tell if it I was one I think it's like this one that's underneath us right now. Uh, that one. Yeah. No, it's just like a darker, darker version of the same. Same eel? Land seals or whatever. I feel whatever. like it's kind of tell hard to tell if they're not blowing up their their mouth, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're pretty sleek when the mouth's not open. Oh, you. <laughs> Sorry, I keep calling you Renny. It's I'm okay. Tired. Yeah. <laughs> I, I it, like. <laughs> it's like it just processed in my brain. It took me a little while there. <laughs> I, I just feel bad because I definitely don't have the <laughs> biological knowledge that Rennie does to tune in on. Dave, have you ever um, been on the boat before on videoing hydrothermal vents? Yes. A um, couple of couple of different ships. Would you like to share how those experiences were and how those vents kind of compared to the one we're seeing here? I haven't seen one here yet. Well, this, <laughs> I guess maybe this landscape. Yeah, then. very very different. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm familiar with the uh, vents off of uh, Vancouver Island. Uh, the Endeavor field and uh, around in there, and uh, they're they're not on uh, not on the sides of craters uh, like this. So there's they come off of the seafloor and they build their own structures uh, as the uh, stuff that comes out of the vent uh, settles around it and builds up, and then then it falls over. Gravity fall, makes it fall over, and then they rebuild and that kind of stuff. So it looks like from a distance, it looks like church spires. Beautiful. It is. It's very Earth, beautiful. Earth's church spires. There you go. Can you bring the vessel back? Because I'm moving. I'm going that way. It's coming here. Oh, I need to go there. I'm, I'm traveling that way. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm. I'm still on the 1160, but I, you know, I'm still on the wall at 1160, moving from right to left. That's, yeah.
Hey, Simon and Johan. Yes. Uh, so we are going to run cinema camera, or we're going to run uh, immersive for kind of the rest of the time. So if you see sort of a shadow on the fisheye, you're kind of too close. Does that make sense? And nice slow moves around things. So we're just going to grab a bunch of footage. Copy. Yep. If, if we got to stop, we understand. Uh, but, you know, kind of cool things if we can sort of lateral around big objects, you know, like spin around it a little bit and then fly forward. Yep. Thanks. You have a little bit of tether right now, but not much. All right, so someone in the chat asked if this was an active volcano. Zach, do you want to talk about hydrothermal vents and um, Hawaii's volcanoes? Um, yeah, I mean, this is, we're on top of the hot spot essentially right now. Um, so yeah, Hawaii, every one of the islands basically started erupting in the same area and have shifted um, off. So yeah, this isn't um, erupting as we see it, obviously. Um, but yeah, this is definitely on the active spot uh, to be to be forming. Yeah, it's essentially this is a volcano. That's that's kind of the best explanation I have. <laughs> so yeah, and so active doesn't doesn't mean that it's spewing lava constantly either. So um, that's an erupting volcano. Active is kind of, it just has the potential. Um, usually there's some seismic activities, things like that. Um, a lot of Hawaiian islands are constantly venting. So mm -hmm. that's releasing hot, uh, the pressure, gas, steams. Um, and so you get, it keeps actually, I think it keeps the the volcano from like a big eruption because it's constantly venting and mm. you don't have this big massive explosion. Mm. It is, I think, the longest erupting volcano in history. Mm. Or, well, current history. Interesting. So just to give our viewers an update on some of our data here, Herc's current depth is 1,154 meters. The temperature is 3.77 degrees Celsius. Um, and we have 9.08% oxygen saturation. And salinity, I think salinity kind of helps us look at our density as well. We're at 34.5 PSU. It's also, this kind of volcano is coming from the, the hot spot as opposed to the ones that come around the Ring of Fire, which are from subduction zones from the, uh, the continental, the oceanic crust sinking beneath the continental crust, which then kind of drags seawater and everything down with it, forms a volcanic chain around 100 kilometers in from that subduction zone and gives rise to the kind of the more explosive eruptions that you see uh, in those areas. And so the hydrothermal vents that um, Dave was talking about earlier is a, from that kind of the ring of fire side of things. Yeah, a lot of the hydrothermal vents that get, as the seafloor moves around subducting and uh, spreading arcs and everything else, it forms small cracks in the crust and uh, water gets dragged down into those crusts, heats up in the Earth's surface and finds a, another crust to come out of. And as it heats up, it dissolves minerals into it, which builds the spires that, are, that we see and gives rise to the, the black smoke if the temperature's high enough that we see at those um, venting sites. 
One of our viewers is asking if it's known if this is a volcano that feeds magma to the Big Island volcano. And so the Big Island's actually not is multiple volcanoes, and then you have another here. They're all coming from the same hot spot. So it's the same hot spot magma that is feeding these all these volcanoes. So yes, it would be similar, but I wouldn't call it this volcano feeding those volcanoes. It's the hot spot. Who has seen lava before? I have. I have as well. Yeah. I, on, have you only seen it on the Big Island, or have you yeah. gone anywhere else? Just on the Big Island, yeah. Seen it a couple times. Been pretty lucky. Yeah. I've seen it a couple times on the Big Island, and then I've also gone to Guatemala, and you can, I did this hike where you hiked up this one volcano, and you watch Volcano Acatenango exploding all night, and that was, it had a big oh. explosion, be like, poof. So you camped on top of a dormant volcano and watched an active volcano. It was very cool. And then I also got to see a volcano erupting in Iceland. Wow. Did you get that sea cucumber, Dan? Oh, yeah. Is that our second I one? I did. That's our second one. Second one. Two more than I expected. You look like a twin. <laughs> Has anyone in the front row been able to see a volcano? No, I haven't been lucky enough to do it. I know I studied a few, I think of, yeah, but not, uh, never actually seen one. Seen the one on Big Island and then uh, a bunch of dormant uh, calderas and stuff, yeah. so. Similarly, I've just seen uh, the Big Island. Which I don't believe there's any lava at the Big Island at the moment. Is that right, Zach? Do you know? Yeah, there's no glow or anything right no. now. Yeah. It was erupting not too long ago. You could yeah, a couple er months ago. But you could ago. see some. The Kilauea crater was filled with lava, lava pool. Yeah. Yeah, it was about two months ago. And that was the highest I'd ever seen that lake, too. It was pretty high from the visitor center. You could yeah. see it pretty clear, which typically all you see is the glow from up there. But yeah. yeah, the lake was really high this time. And they I know they closed quite a few of the trails just for safety as well, because it was so high. And yeah. Doesn't the names for one of the, the lava flows come from Hawaiian, the Pohoi Hoi? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Pohoi Hoi. And ah, uh -uh. uh -uh. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Joyce amused me. <laughs> yep. So Pele is the Hawaiian god of the volcano. Um, and so I always think it's really interesting um, that a lot of people take Hawaiian, or like you go to the big island and you see lava rocks and people have taken these lava rocks and it's considered bad luck and that it'll, um, you'll anger Pele if you take these rocks. And so you get cursed with bad luck and if you go to the visitor centers, they have all these books. You can actually get this book with all these letters from people who have mailed their rocks back and with letters detailing all the bad things that happened to them ever since they took the rock. So, uh, Dan, what's our, uh, what's our status here? How much time do we got left to? We got about 20, 33 minutes, 32 minutes now. Um, and we're just creeping along the 1160 isobath and trying to find any volcanic activity, hyperthermal activity. 
That's awesome. I'm assuming that's a thruster wash there. That I'm beautiful. It is, yeah. That beautiful dramatic. See, and if if we were disreputable Discovery Channel <laughs> documentary and. I'd have you prop wash this whole thing, and then we would just put a, a slow rumble and say, you know, the volcanic rocks yeah, are teeming, teeming with geologic life. Jonathan, you have a very good narrator voice. <laughs> That's what I do. Looks like you're moving more in South Simon. I'll keep the ship moving, but at yeah, 180. And, yeah. Uh, Simon, which What's our uh, lighting situation here? So I've got uppers and mids and afts on right now. Okay, can we try the just forwards with this real quick? Forwards, you mean the uppers? Just the uppers, yeah. Yeah. Nah. Oh, there no. you go. Nah. No? How about just uh, Atalanta? What does Atalanta look like? I'm seeing. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Nope. Oh. <laughs> <Sorry>. Ooh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like a disco party down there now. Let's um, I'm gonna stop recording, and uh, I'm assuming we're waiting for a ship move. And if you feel comfortable flying in this lighting condition, um, I would love to just do some kind of slow floaty shots that follow along this ridge. And ideally, uh, I'm not sure the position of Atalanta relative to you, but ideally a little bit less shadow. Um, well, I don't know. It looks very spookily Halloween. I love it. One second. I can try and get less shadow, but I doubt much. I can give you more light. I like light. Uh, I'll take lights over shadows. I just turn this way a little. Oh, look at that. That's incredible. Oh, yeah. Let's follow that ridge down. And storytelling when you're filming like this, where you really don't have a plan because you don't know what's going to come. If you think it's interesting, just follow it. Let your eye follow it and, and, and keep on going. And then um, think exceptionally slow thoughts, uh, Simon. Just like right, absolutely right. butter the toast here. An equally compelling view with this kind of lighting out of uh, uh, Zeus on Safed 1 as well. It's a very round rock there at the tip. We have someone asking. Oh, wow. There you go. Yeah, just keep keep spinning around that. That little circular rock thing is a good point of interest to keep rolling around. I'm not sure if you can drop by about a meter or so on Hercules. Yeah. Oh, look at that cool shadow. We have someone in the chat. You could probably just lateral straight right. Watch out for the uh, extra ridge that's just on your starboard side right now. I do that. Shot's yours now. You can move however you need. Oh, yeah. That looks cool. Absolutely beautiful. Wow. <laughs> All right. That shot's dead. Thank you. Winch, Winch come, come control, down. please come up 10 meters. Oh, come on. There it goes. <laughs> Runaway camera? Nope. Just checking to make sure my tether is not snagging. I really love when the Atalanta's a little higher like this now. You just get this really subtle effect of stacked. I'm going to turn the light on if it's all right. Yeah, of course. 
Ooh, which light is that? That's the um, that's the one on the arm, but it's coming across the the view a little. Oh, I like a little it. Forward. Winch, winch, control, please come down to five meters. You can do what you'd like with the lights. I think we got this this All style right. of shot. Copy that. It's remarkable how much five meters makes a difference for uh, for Atalanta's capacity to light. Maybe a slow, yeah, like nice slow spin on that. I like that. I'm recording that. Some of these little floaties will look incredible in 3D. Ooh, yeah, can you uh, push forward on that? Yeah. Slow, 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 yeah. buttered the toast. I don't know where that came from. So Jonathan, the chat is wondering if you could use an infrared camera to see warm water and spot the vents. I am 99% sure that uh, near infrared that would be used to spot heat wouldn't work underwater, but that is not my science. Dan? Yeah, I don't know the distance that you'd be able to, I mean, if you're close, you could do it, but I don't know how far we'd be away. So it, you'd have to be close yeah. enough that you could find the vents other ways than yeah. the infrared. Because yeah. I think also the red light, right, gets absorbed out of the water. It doesn't travel very far. That looks very interesting. We had one viewer asking if where the vents were, and that's what we're trying to find out. So we're looking for the vents. Things down here are constantly moving, constantly shifting. There's one that we spot at the beginning that had a marker from an yeah. old... Simon, I'm going to move at a 20 meters west, east. Roger. So, yeah, right now we're just looking for a previous, you know, but this was 1997, so that was... Uh, Say Simon, 20, can we see what this looks like with no lights? Five years ago? Like, as when this, how things change. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially in. Let's, uh, let's. Yeah, I appreciate this view. You could just keep, uh,. Simon, you're you're in full control here to kind of float around and see what's interesting. Roger that. We're regularly contacted by different blue chip. Uh, Nature documentary crews, blue chip being, you know, it's the BBCs of the world. It's the big natural history shoots, um, Silverback and Netflix, etc. About the possibility of, you know, putting cinematographers of their own while to to film and potentially use Nautilus as a filming platform, which is of course something we would love to do and love to support. But in truth, although you know, I'd love to say that I have any iota of control as a cinematographer, the reality is that the ROV pilots. Um, you know, this dance between um, the Hercules and Atalanta itself is, is the true cinematographer. Um, there, there's the only thing I'm doing really back here is just pressing start and stop record and um, the capacity just to to control any shot and, and nature work is always very limited. And in this case, uh, it's much better just to allow the real experts to take full control and look at the world around them and establish what looks extraordinary, such as, such as this right here. And Dan, we have a question in the chat asking 
how is this project and others like it funded? So, since you kind of represent our funder for this, can you please talk a little about it? Sure. So, um, th this, uh, you know, this cruise is funded by the Office of Naval Research, and uh, we were really looking at um, high resolution cameras, photogrammetry, um, and, you know, the immersion stuff as well. Um, and how well we can, how well we can go. So we constantly look at the new technologies out there, and I would say about every five years we start to take a look and say, all right, what's the next leap that we can do? And I think you know, over the past five years we've seen things like Stereo Pi and Lightroom and Reality Capture really come online. So now it's time to see what you know the advances that they've made in the commercial industry. Um, how can this be applied to not only ocean sciences, but, you know, other applications like, you know, sharing this with museums and educational aspects. It's been very fun to have the opportunity to apply some of these, what I'd call production ready tools um, to different applications like this. So. Um, and a great example is the photogrammetry software that we're running right now. It's uh, by a company called Reality Capture, although there's many different um, uh, programs out there. And if you're listening, um, you know, I, I would endorse anything that works for your particular aspect. But in this instance, we actually went with Reality Capture with this funding because it uh, was just actually acquired by Epic Games. And it's a good example of uh, technology that I would consider uh, maturing to the point where it is acquired. And I like it when something gets acquired that's a tool that I want to use because uh, that suddenly means that it has a $5.7 billion evaluated company behind the technology that's using it and developing it. And indeed, in the last six months since it was acquired, um, the advancement uh, in how Unreal Engine, which drives which drives an uh, incredible number of um, the actual simulators around the world, so not just games, but, but true training simulators, um, uh, and as well as games. Uh, you know, Epic, Epic Games is a platform, a, a physics-based uh, system where, where developers uh, develop games for it. Um, and the technology is to go straight from reality capture and into dry, drop these models right into 3D, into an Unreal Engine world is, is quite astounding. And uh, look at that. Extraordinary, Simon. So, uh, Jonathan, if you could talk a little bit about it, and forgive me if you've already done so, but the ability to, with this technology, this high resolution uh, imagery, uh, in a, in a, uh, on somebody's either iPhone, on their iPhone, up or there, a special uh, headset, you can just step Mike, into, you can be in this, in this further, uh, caldera. Yeah. Is that that's going to be possible, and how will that work? We're going to try to do two different things. One is um, we're going to take those high-resolution bathy scans that uh, uh, from K2's Norbit and create. We're going to create a uh, virtual world off of that, um, uh, just as a wireframe. And that'll that'll be the canvas of which we can paint um, some of these imagery, the three D the three D models that we've created, which of course. You can see right now, this is going to be a tiny portion of what we, you know, the, the, cal the caldera that's actually around us. So there'll be these little, like, little paints of light um, is what's in my mind for how this could look in a simulation environment. Um, and then this, this style of video as well um, will really put you right in the hot seat of ROV Hercules. Um, no one else can, um, you know, uh, go down to... How deep are we now? Thousand, thousand meters depth. Huh. Um, yeah. And so this is going to be a true ride along, um, as if you are sitting on the front porch of Hercules. It'll be fully 3D, and you'll have a 180 degree view of the world around you um, as we're looking around at at uh, these incredible landscapes. I personally love it because I suspect, although the proof will be in the pudding, that. Um, you know, and on the one hand, if you're if you're being if you're being really uh, pessimistic, we are we are definitely just looking at rock and dirt right now. Like, there's no way around it, right? 
Um, and if we were if we were winch, filming winch control. And if we were filming out in uh, Utah or, you know, some some muddy hole in Arkansas, you'd be like, wow, you know, why did you just record that in 12K? Um, it's, that is totally unnecessary. But but the magic here is that because we are in such an alien world that um, people that are outside of this control room have rarely seen, if ever, um, even right. in a documentary. Um, it Absolutely. makes it compelling in its own right. It, it tells a story without you needing to tell a story because because it is an extraordinary uh, spot on planet Earth and and sharing the excitement uh, and the honor of being able to do this is so important. And it's the first time it's ever been done. It's never been done before. Yep. Yeah. 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 Which makes it even better. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yes, sir. Jonathan, you mentioned 12K, and there's talk at 3K and 4K. What do all the Ks mean, and why do the Ks <laughs> matter? A K is a uh, unit. It's not just OK? A K, a K is a unit of measurement of pixel density. Um, so your a TV um, in, in HD high definition was 1920 by by 1080, um, it's uh, 1900 pixels to the ho horizontally and 1080 up and down. Um, and 4K is 4000 ish to the right. Um, and so as you have more and more pixels, um, the, the sharper and sharper the image gets. Um, and in truth, that is not really. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love I love image quality and and I love doing things you know right. But on the internet, uh, seventy percent of our viewers are actually viewing this on their phones right now, um, and they view all of our highlight clips on their phones. So, if we're being really honest, you don't need still more than HD quality um, for for our target audience viewing this online. But if we're going to be viewing this in an IMAX theater or even a small walk-in projection um, system at your at your local science center. Um, then you really do notice the difference. Um, and so this system was built not for the Ks. Um, the Ks are cool, but this system was built just to record at the highest possible quality so that we can always downgrade that quality to meet whatever you need. Um, but we're never going to come back here again. Yeah. So um, you might as well get this at, at the best possible. Could you see yourself in the future, um, Nautilus in the sphere in Las Vegas? Wow. I do like that. Um, absolutely. Yes, the answer is yes. Um, that's the other cool, unique thing about what we do is uh, we're, we are a very, very tiny, small portion of um, the oceanographic community that has ROVs that have cameras like this. And we're even a smaller portion of the ROV community that um, has is a not-for-profit and is bringing in support and has support from groups like the Office of Naval Research to um, explore in the truest sense of the fashion, right? Um, because other institutions um, might not uh, might not have the freedom to do with what they would um, in terms of like our capacity to explore here. Uh, Ocean X comes to mind. They have incredible technologies. They actually have a very similar camera system like this. But I've never seen, nor it's highly likely we may never see some of the footage that comes out of that because it's a charter ship and there's all sorts of really, really deep contracts that are going in and out um, as, as a private entity. Um, you also have an Ambari. An Ambari, so yeah. The yeah. other ROV just got a brand new ship. Really nice ship, too. Yeah. And then the Western Flyer is from the Bari's going out to um, the Florida Atlantic Uni or Florida Universities Consortium. When they're going to get a new ROV, right? Yeah, that should be coming along. Uh, Jonathan, will you be able to walk around objects like this central peak that uh, we've seen today? Will you be able to, in the, in the augmented reality, uh, on your phone, whatever device you're using, will you be able to walk around it essentially in, in three dimensions? 
to see it from all sides. As long as we've imaged all the sides, then yes. Yeah. Yeah. For yeah, a lot of these faces, the just as an example, what we're doing right now, we'd be able to walk in and around this area because we're doing this nice counter spin that's uh, illuminated by, is this just illuminated by that one light on the arm? Yeah, I've got the one light on the arm and then there's one on the uh, oh, that's extraordinary. On, the on the port side of the vehicle as well, Just, but that's shining backwards and aft. Yeah. So most of the light you're seeing here is just simply from that front light oh. on the arm. That is extraordinary. Wow. So Jonathan, here's a comment in the chat for you. Well, as someone who is always watching these dives on their 4K projector on the wall, they very much appreciate your higher resolution shots. They just wish whatever compression algorithm you use would be better, or somehow the <laughs> bitrate could be cranked up a bit because it can kill a lot of the detail. Uh, yeah. So any response for that? I mean, that's that that ship life. Um, it's that's changing rapidly with Star. Link Maritime Starlink coming online. This is the first season that we have been um, testing that system. That system still has a lot of work to actually support the kind of live streams that we have, but it's definitely on our radar. It's been a while since uh, we've dedicated the resources and more specifically the the um, the personnel behind thinking of making a change like that. Um, I'd reflect that, you know. Uh, I'd, I'd go back to that difference between um, broadcast and the, the stability and the forethought that's really required to do live streaming, correct, from a ship like this. This isn't just about switching out one piece of hardware. It's, it's the entire chain from the type of camera to the satellite, to the ship, to the satellite, to where it's being received, where it's being decoded, et cetera. So it is on our radar. Um, and with uh, some new modern compression and the new availability of bandwidth, that's great. But I will not tell the internet what our bandwidth cost is because I don't know the exact cost, but I can guarantee you it is an eye-watering amount that is five digits long um, just to support a ship like this. I'm coming down, Mike. So. Well, and we do use a lot of internet. That's correct. Right now we are dedicating a full half of our upload link at any one time to these three satellite feeds, um, primarily to um, uh, provide the lowest latency feed for scientists ashore. And, and that is that is a, another aspect. In fact, um, our, our lead video engineer, Pete, um, was just telling me a little bit more about um, how some of these compression algorithms can prioritize quality versus uh, latency. And, and as a science forward, exploration forward institution that has scientists ashore, uh, we definitely prioritize the latency so that um, a scientist can, can be with us virtually through this, uh, through this concept of telepresence. Um, and uh, um, when they see something, we're not already five seconds behind. It's, 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 it's in real time to say, stop, stop the ship. I've never seen a sea cucumber so amazing. So just so everyone's on the same page, we got about 10 minutes before they have to start the process to surface. So I really like these almost columnar basalty yeah. things. Can we get the lights off again? And, um, and uh, do, ooh. ooh, that's nice. Spooky and green with it. I like that. I don't really like the yeah. You know, green is fine. Potentially like columnar. Hey, can I get some? Can we put the lasers on just for, just for giggles, real quick? Oh, that's what a fascinating view. Let's um, just just for maybe about ten seconds while you la can you lateral off to the starboard a little bit, just nice and nice and slow, like you're. Uh, like you're lovingly spooning out some Marmite or whatever Canadians. Oh, I do like, like Marmite. There you go. See, got it. It's a love it or hated thing, though. That's. Yeah. I actually really like it too. Oh, I'm I not cannot. gonna lie. Do you like Vegemite? Nope. <laughs> it's the same thing. <laughs> it's not no, the I think no. Vegemite is even stronger than Marmite. Okay, we could do the lasers but off. That that was a fun careful. thought experiment. It's Thank like saying peanut butter and butter are the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> are they not? <laughs> Um, yeah, let's, can we, can we lateral off to the, uh, port side now and yeah. maybe get up towards the weird, look at all the weird patterns to the, so uh, cool. up, up a little bit. Let's, let's feature those and 
maybe maintain a standoff distance of about, what are you at right now? Uh, about two and a half meters. Yeah, about two meters. Don't get any closer than that. But then, um, yeah, ROV is yours. Just explore right this. There. It's incredible. Seems like almost like columnar basalts covered in zinc oxide. Yeah. And you can see there's those like more rounded ones below where lava must have come out a little slower and yeah, there's definitely more of a flow over the top of pillows like it looks like. Yeah. yeah. Do they call this stratigraphy when you get kinda it's like layers like a parfait? Yeah. Hey, everybody likes parfait. There you go, Mike. Work those lights. Everyone in this control room will uh, be offered an assisting camera person credit. And this is a team effort. And I really wish we had some sort of tilt mechanism on the counter on the camera, but that'll just have to be. Wow. Nice move, Simon. Unreal. And that smooth movement will be so evident to an audience watching this in high resolution on yeah. a huge screen. It'll make all the difference in the world. And folks looking at Sat feed one, you could just get a little hint of, but uh, Sat feed three has that full, beautiful, yeah, wide. Yeah. There you go, Simon. Let's, uh, yeah, let rocket ship back in there. A little bit of Star Wars action here. Yeah, and it's it, 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 it just it's it's an alien planet. To, you know, uh, everyone who sees that, it's just extraordinary. Would you be comfortable flying right under Atalanta? Uh, nine meter separation, yeah, if Atlanta comes up a little, I mean, I can... Winch, winch, control, please come up three meters. <laughs> wow. John, winch, winch, what control, is it come up five meters in total. And now let's uh, do a counter lateral to the left. Roger. Let's get that. Let that go out of shot a little. Yep. What is it that gives the background, the yeah. landscape, that faint, kind of a faint green color? That was good. Color? Um, That's incredible. No, no, no. Simon and Mike. Okay, chat, ROV is yours. Roger that. The chat is saying you guys should put um, cameramen on your resumes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, totally. Absolutely. There you go. Like there you go. That's very nice. Jonathan, what is it that gives the background the, that's kind of a faint green color with the, at these lower light levels? Um, partly it is because I white balanced for something that was not. So the lights that are coming from Atalanta are coming from much further away. Okay. So.